This 1985 Ferrari 308 QV is hiding something. A chipped intake plenum. It's really common on these cars. After all these years, the paint just flakes off. Now, some people go ahead and paint the plenum in place, but I'm way too OCD for that. So what I'm going to be doing is taking off the intake plenum and the throttle body, stripping it down, powder coating it in the right color with the right wrinkle finish, and then putting it back on the car, hoping the engine still works. Now I've taken off the rear deck lid to give me more access, and it is amazing how much more space there is back here. Definitely recommended. The intake here has a, a bunch of things coming out of it. So what I'm going to do is label all the hoses and whatever goes into it. So I'm going to pull them off. Later on, I can reference this video or a picture, and I know where everything goes. This is the throttle position sensor. I just want to take note of where it is. It's adjustable. Probably still going to have to adjust it once everything goes back, but it's good to get it in the ballpark. There are a lot of connections and hoses to remove, but you'll need to take them all off to free up the intake and throttle body. Now there are eight nuts that hold the intake plenum on, and some are easier to get to than others, but you can probably count on contorting yourself a little bit. The nuts on the side are pretty easy to access with a uh, ratchet, but when you start going towards the ones in the front, near the front bank, you may have to remove one or two of the fuel lines to have access with a spanner. Also, for these nuts on the front bank, when you get towards the end of the stud, they're really tight against the intake runner, so you'll have to lift the intake plenum up a little bit just to free up the nut. Okay, so I pulled the intake off, and I want to show you a potential ticking time bomb in here. So there are little sleeves that center the gasket on the intake. And as you pull them up, they will become loose. If one of these little sleeves finds its way into the runner, you got a problem. So you have to be really, really careful. You can take a piece of cardboard and slide it in between the intake and the runners, or you can take some tape and wrap it around the stud. The bottom line is you just want to make sure that all of those spacers stay with the intake plenum as you lift it up and pull it off. And when you take off the intake, it's a good idea to count all of these spacers to make sure you have all eight, like I do right here. So I think there are none in the engine. When it comes to stripping the intake, some people believe in blasting and some people use stripper. Um, I don't really like the idea of blasting an intake because anything that you use to blast could somehow find its way into the engine. If you are going to go and do blasting, probably better to use walnut shell or soda, something soluble in water, definitely not glass beads. I've read some horror stories of people who blasted with glass beads and then seized their engine inside of 30 seconds after starting it up. So just be really careful. I'm using a product here called Decoat by Eastwood. Uh, it's pretty safe and you just kind of brush it on and let it sit for a while to do its magic. The stripper's been on for about uh, eight hours or so and it's created its own version of wrinkle paint. I'll also strip the throttle body which entails taking off all of the parts for that too. After I finish stripping the intake, I rinsed it off really well with water, blew it out with compressed air, and then gave it a coat of metal ready so the powder had some tooth, something to stick to. Now I just have to mask off the areas I don't want powder coated. For masking, I'm using a special high temperature tape that you can get at any kind of powder coating store or on Amazon, and also plugs to uh, plug up all the holes. These are silicone and can withstand high temperature. And now it's time to powder coat. I'll put a link to this powder in the description below. And I'm using the Eastwood Home Powder Coating Kit which works really well. I'm going to do the bottom side of the plenum first so that I can let gravity let the powder fall into the tiny little spots on the top side of the intake plenum in the script and such. So it looks like it's pretty well coated and now it's time to go into the oven. Now the piece is finished baking and I'm just going to take a sanding block and take the powder coat off the raised areas. And now the only thing left is just to Clean up the raised areas with a sanding block, just gently. 
and there you have it. Really nice wrinkle finish that comes from that powder. And I'll put the link in the video description. Now I'll put new gaskets onto the intake plenum. And there's a little centering pin for those. These little spacers go one on each stud. So we'll slide those down. And the new gasket actually holds them in pretty well. And now I'll move on to the throttle body. Since it's all apart, I figured it was a good time to replace all the springs. But you see that this piece goes into that little hole and then the hook will wrap around the base of this lever here. We'll get it in there and then we'll kind of spin it around. And then we'll wiggle its way down onto the throttle body here. We don't want to put any undue stress on the throttle body in here by overextending it. So I'm going to put this idle adjustment screw back in. And I know from when I took it apart before, it was 13 and a half turns to where it was set just to get it right in the ballpark. So I'm just going to put that back the same way. Now we got the lock for the nut. And I'm going to go with a brand new M8 stainless nut on this. Yeah, it's feeling pretty smooth. Much better spring now that it's replaced. Now I'm going to tighten this down, but I don't really need to torque it much because it's got this protector to keep the nut from coming off. And it's looking pretty good there. Now for this front linkage, we've got this lever piece with the spring that goes in here. You have to kind of wrangle the spring to get it in. And then there's this bolt on which everything pivots. So it's got to really run smooth in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot it with a little bit of lithium grease in the middle here. Make sure that I got good lube. Should be wearing gloves for this, but you know, it always feels better when you don't have gloves on. <laughs> All right. This is in and it's feeling really smooth at this point. So anyway, once this bolt is in, got this little washer, which goes there, and then this big washer, which goes here, and then it all goes right into here. Spring goes in that little spot, and then we'll wrangle this to get everything in line. Keep everything in the channel, and then just start tightening this up. And now just lock this nut in. And now it's all together. I'm just checking it. So now it's time to put everything back. And the first thing I'm going to do is cover up those intakes to make sure the spacers don't fall. Here's a secret weapon, business cards. What I'm going to do is put them over the holes, not blocking where the studs go. And this will prevent the spacers from falling in if any of them come free while I'm putting the intake on. Now the spacers sit pretty tight in the new gaskets, so I don't think anything's going to fall. But just in case, all right, that's in. And now, pretty important to pull the business cards out unless you don't want your engine to run. Now here's the gasket that's gonna go right here between the uh, intake cleanum and the throttle body for McCambi. I love the way they package everything here. Just slice it open the razor blade and ready to go. So I'm just gonna put this on dry. I'm not gonna use any RTV. At least I hope I don't need to. So I'll go on there and then we'll fit the throttle body. And I'm not going to bolt anything down yet because I'm not sure what kind of adjustment I'm going to have to do on the throttle cable. And I'd rather not have to pull everything apart just to get at that bolt again. Just kind of fight this through a little bit. If we're lucky and it works, I won't have to do this again. And now that everything's in place, I'll just reconnect all of the hoses and get everything back to the way it was. And here's the finished installation. You can see that the box looks really great. 
and it just cleans up the whole engine compartment. Start to finish, this is about a two-day project and it really isn't that difficult if you take your time and you're very, very careful and methodical. But the difference in the engine bay is pretty amazing and totally worth it, I think. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. Be safe and enjoy.